What's up, YouTube? We're here today with the Stanley Parable. Now, I haven't played this game before. I've seen other people play it. I think it's just like an office simulator or something. I don't know. We'll see. All I know is the end is never. The end is never. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. There's one big problem, game. My name's Kazmir, not Stanley. Can't interact. Well, it sounds like we're Stanley. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Oh, let's turn that off. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. You think you know me, narrator? Please, are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times, is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Fourteen. Come on, narrator, give me an achievement. Go away. Go away. Fine. All right, let's move on. Beautiful. Four twenty. Well, this is just riveting.
When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. But I can go right. Ooh, this is... Oh, I don't know what to do. Tell me what to do, YouTube. Should I obey? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Why must you make me make hard life decisions? I'm not good at this. That's what wives are for. They make all the hard decisions. Uh, we'll go. We'll, we'll obey. No, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Everyone is unique. You most of all. Ooh, the red has charts and slides. Well, isn't that amazing? That was trippy. Hmm. Yes, my dreams for the future is lunch. for not getting fired. Talk less. Hmm. Well then. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. No. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. You shut your mouth. You know, I don't like it. I should have went in the right door. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> yeah, you like it, narrator? Is this I'm, a good game to you? Are you still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Wouldn't you like to know? I think there's a huge plot twist in here. Like you this, do realize like there's no cable. choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the room closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Then why was it programmed here, game? Maybe to you, this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe yes. when you go talk about this with your friends, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. 
It's marvelous. I hope your friends find this concerning. <laughs> this is the most marvelous part. Look at this. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. Oh, he probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. You better alert the uh, authorities. Anyone who happens to be nearby, the person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right. Savage. When you've done that, just step out into the hallway. I don't want to stay, actually. You're freaking savage. All right. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee <laughs> you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. <laughs> Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stairs. Mm, so we can either obey or disobey again. Maybe we should do two playthroughs of this. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I wish I could just ask you guys right now. Should I obey or disobey through this playthrough? Hmm. Let, let's let's be obedient, I guess. We'll, we might do maybe we'll maybe we'll do another one where we like disobey him, and see what happens in that path. The executive bath. Me in. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2 Eight, four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Well, yeah, why would, how would I know this? How would I know this? Well, the ceilings in here are really high. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Crap. Two, eight, four. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. Whoa. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. I'm a genius.
We're doing it. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Hmm. Hmm. Ah. But this way it says escape. I don't like this one. This says escape. I'm going to have to think on this one, guys. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll find out in the next one. Kesmir out.